everybody, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. We're going to be going over a brand new Notions by Creative Grids. This is called the Bowl Cozy Template Set. The Bowl Cozies have been one of our customers' absolute favorite projects, easy to do in a short amount of time, and I love that we can be taking, these are microwavable, make sure you're not using any fabric with any metallics in it, 100% cotton, no metallics. You can put this right into the microwave or when a dish is coming out of maybe the microwave or the oven, you're setting it inside the bowl cozy, whether that's the large one or maybe the small one for soups, stews. It helps keep your hands from being burned, but it also keeps uh, the soup or the casserole nice and warm longer so that when you're serving that up, I know what that's like when we have potlucks, things are coming out of the oven at different times and I'm trying to keep everything warm. These help make that possible. Now Creative Grids came out with the Bowl Cozy template set that I can't wait to show you how to use. I was trying to figure out what collection do I want to showcase and this is called Gnome's Night Out. It's absolutely adorable from Northcott Fabrics obviously Halloween themed. I'm going to be putting all the Halloween candy in. So when those little trick-or-treaters come to the door, the candy will be in here and I'll just be able to hand that out. So this is, I thought, a really fun project for that. But of course, you could be using whatever fabrics you want. The Bowl Cozy template set, this new tool, will be what you need for both the small and the large. I love that. Let's just start off with the large one. So this is what that looks like. You'll get both in your template a set. So you can use, of course, the pre-cut batting, which is my favorite. It's already ready to go. Or if you're like, I've got tons of leftover batting in my sewing room. I don't want to be buying the pre-cut uh, batting. Show me how to use your tool. So let's go over that. Um, I don't have a lot of that batting laying around. I send my quilts out uh, to be quilted, so I don't have those big scraps of batting that you might have. Let's just start off with the batting. To make the large bowl cozy template, as, the, as well as the small one, but with the large one, you'll want two pieces of batting, each cut to 16 inches, and two fabrics each cut to 16 inches square. This is a very fat quarter friendly project because fat quarters are 18 by 21. So the, I love that. You can pick up a fat quarter bundle. Maybe you're not sure what you want to do with that. This would be a great project for that. So you're cutting two 16 inch squares. But let's just put those aside for the moment and we'll just focus on one piece of the batting. You'll fold that in half and you'll fold that in half again. So I've got my fold here and my fold here. Notice these are the raw edges on this side. I'm going to put this up here and I'm going to use my spinning mat so I'm making sure I'm using, I'm making some very safe cuts. So let's get to zero in real quick on the large bowl cozy template, the outer portion. And really it's the same for the small. It's just a smaller profile. Notice it says folded edge here, folded edge here. So we're going to drop that right into the corner just like that. And we'll press down and we'll make a cut. Make sure that's still in our corners. And this is where I like to rotate that because you can imagine that does become a little bit of an awkward angle. And now you have your very first piece of batting. I'll repeat that for a second piece of batting and I'll do that off camera. Let's just move right on to the fabric itself. It doesn't matter whether you do this with wrong sides together or right sides together. It's the exact same step. The thing I definitely want to just remind you about is sometimes when you're looking straight down into fabric, it's easy to kind of forget what edge is the raw edge and which edge is the folded. I almost <laughs> cut this backward when I was doing my um, making this bowl. So make sure your folds are here and the side that you're placing that on says folded edge, folded edge, and same thing. We're just going to make our cuts.
And just like that, we have this piece cut out. And now that will be placed right on top of that, just like that. So you're just going to stack those. Now I'll go ahead and uh, cut out my other two pieces, and we'll move on to the next step of making our large bowl cozy. So I have both pieces of fabric and both pieces of batting. When you're placing them together, you just kind of, it's easier to almost see it on the batting side. And you just, you're just trying to stack them together. If you're going to be making the small bowl cozy, it's the same steps. You're just cutting your fabrics to 11 inches and then the batting to 11 inches. Or again, you're using, if you want to just skip cutting the batting, this lovely, it's, it's just such a soft, I wish you could feel this uh, batting where um, that's already done for you. We have that in both the large bowl cozy as well as the small. And you'd be using the template for your fabric um, because that, of course, you don't know which fabric you're going to use. So let's put that aside. Once that's done and you've stacked the fabrics, you can choose to do whatever quilting you want on that, but you want to do something to attach those layers. It's easiest to mark it from the back side of it and see it from the back side. And I'm just going to do an X. If you can see the one I've done from above, I just did a simple X. We don't need anything uh, fancy. You don't need to be accomplished long arm quilter to do this simple project. I think I need a refill in my pen there. I can see my line, but just barely. And I just drew an X. Make sure you're also using 100% cotton thread. No metallic in there, especially if you're going to be using that in the microwave itself. So I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way across from side to side. Okay, so you just sew your X and you repeat that for your second piece. Now to complete the prep, you'll just fold this in half. That's the dart that we created with our template. And just pin this here. You can pin the opposite. You can actually pin all four of the darts and sew them all at the same time to just increase your kind of efficiency at the sewing machine, sewing a quarter of an inch. And while we're here, we can just fold that. Isn't that nice? That bowl cozy template just makes a perfect, it's, I love, I love when I get to cut around templates. I find, I find the accuracy is so fantastic and it makes the project come together a lot faster. So just sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance on, on this one as well as the other one. And I've done that ahead of time. So let me just bring that out to save us a little bit of time. And the other thing that I found is handy is of course you've created that quarter inch seam. Just go ahead and give that a good press. It helps the next step to go very quickly. So you want to have your two bowl cozies. And of course your bowl cozy is reversible. I just chose to have this here like this. But if I pop that through, I have the purple stars out. This is completely reversible. I love that part. So there really isn't a wrong side or a right side to this. But for the fabric, of course, we have the right side to the right side. Press, uh, place those with the right sides together. And of course, those seams. That's why I thought that was really nice to press those seams open versus to the side. They nest a little, a bit flatter right there. And that's where I brought in my Wonder Clips. My patchwork pins are too fine and they will bend. So I definitely found a good mission for my Wonder Clips on this. You can just, I, I would recommend you Wonder Clip those um, intersections first because those have to happen. Now be sure you leave a, a place for turning and I'll give you a recommendation on that. Normally I love to have kind of a straight edge where I turn. There is no straight edge <laughs> on the bowls. But I did find that kind of the easiest spot as I clip this together kind of was right in here. Get past this little saddle in here 
maybe starting here, maybe I'll just mark that so I don't forget that. And I wanted to leave, I needed a good fair amount about in here. That's where you will start sewing here, back stitch, and end here with at least a quarter inch seam allowance. You don't need to be shy about your seam allowance on this. If you take a little bit greater of a seam allowance than a quarter inch, your bowl cozy will be just a little bit smaller, but that's fine, no big deal. So we'll go ahead and continue clipping that. And I will meet you over at the sewing machine and we are going to sew this together with at least a quarter inch seam allowance. So there's my mark. I am going to, I'm sewing with a, a 1D right now with my dual feed engaged. And as you can see, I am a very healthy quarter inch seam allowance back stitching several times. At this point here, sometimes I lift up just so it doesn't roll that over. Stop and just kind of pivot so you're going in the end that because it kind of comes to a V and continue. Okay, now my favorite part, turning this through. <laughs> I mean, I know what this is gonna look like, but I still wanna see it, right? So we turn it through. So once you have it turned, I get in there with my fingers, try to push everything out as best I can. I've got my um, Clover Point Turner I'm definitely going to use here right now. The point turner is actually, a, a, it's more than a point turner. You've got the point, but you also have the curve. And that's exactly where I'm like, I know I want that tool with me. And I just run that right along the, the four corners or four cur round corners, I guess I would call them. Get everything out. And I'm gonna get that iron, it's all heating up. I find when I have to close an opening, which of course we do, I like to press that seam under by a quarter inch and press it. It seems to just help it stay in position better when I'm sewing everything closed. Let's get that one corner all the way out. This collection is just so cute with the gnomes. I don't mind cute Halloween. I don't like scary Halloween. <laughs> I, just, I don't mind the cute little gnomes and cute little pumpkins. No scary stuff though. Now, another thing I should have mentioned to you, some people like to clip in that kind of valley where it came in like that, just to relieve a little bit of the stress in there and make it a little bit easier to turn. I didn't do that. As you can see, it's still working out just fine. But let's get in there and press right in this a little bit more. Now I talked about pressing that seam. Let's just bring that over. So if you've never done that before, it's bulky. Of course, you've got the batting in there. Some people even kind of carve out a little bit of the batting. I'm gonna leave that in place and give a quarter, at least a quarter inch press. Whatever you did for a seam allowance is the amount you're going to be pressing under. And once again, those wonder clips are going to come into play to help us close that opening. Just like that. I recommend, even though that's the opening, I like to clip all the way around because once I roll this out with my fingers, I don't want this rolling back in by capturing that, it prevents that from happening. So you see how I'm kind of pulling that out right there? And I can kind of roll that seam out. So I will continue rolling those seams and clipping those because I want to have a nice crisp edge all along here. 
and then we're going to go stop uh, top stitch this which will of course close our opening make sure your top stitch is less than a quarter of an inch you can see I'm shy of that so because we already sewed with a quarter of an inch we want to make sure that our raw edge is inside here so you're going to sew with I sew with more than an eighth but definitely I guess maybe three sixteenths so let me continue clipping and I'll be meeting you at the sewing machine and we're going to finish up our large bulk cozy so you can start anywhere of course and as I said you know I'm just going to pick a spot on my presser foot and keep it at, that's how I'm kind of managing that on the inside of this I'm going to keep that visual and we'll have a nice consistent seam So there we have our reversible bowl cozy. How fun is that? I, I love Halloween anyway when the little ones come, but I think I'm going to enjoy this Halloween just a little bit more <laughs> knowing that when the little ones come and there's candy in here, you could put a bowl in there if you want even more stability, but I think that's a lot of fun. And hey, that's just one holiday. You could be doing these for each holiday, each season, your favorite fabric collection. So fun. To make the small one, same steps, same exact steps, just different measurements, 11 inch on that. And just a reminder, if you want to skip that whole batting thing, uh, my favorite here is this lovely pre-cut batting, both in the small and the large. It makes the project come together even faster. So thanks for giving me a few minutes of your day to show you this amazing new a uh, bowl cozy template set from Creative Grids. I'll see you soon on another shabby video.